everybody it in here today I come to you guys with another video today I'm going to show you guys all of my classics so this will be my classic literature collection I have a couple of books in the same series and then I have some odd bits here and there so yeah let's get started some of these I've read some of these I have not read as of filming this video in the middle of July I'm currently reading Emma by Jane Austen this is the vintage classics edition I do have a couple of more of these, which I will get to eventually. <laughs> I just grabbed the ones closest to me. But yeah, really enjoying it so far. Then we have Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. This is the Pelican Shakespeare, I think they call it. Um, so they're these really, really beautiful editions. So I have a couple of more in that same series. So we have Hamlet and we have uh, The Taming of the Shrew. So I think all the tragedies match each other with black covers. One small comedic is supposed to be like this bluish color. They look really beautiful together. Uh, I haven't read The Taming of the Shrew or Hamlet, but I have started Romeo and Juliet, like two pages. <laughs> no, not really, but like eight pages. So yeah, but I'm working my way through them. Now we have Charles Dickens' uh, Oliver Twist. This is a Wordsworth Classics. This is like really old. Um, I read two pages in it. <laughs> this is the book I have had the longest on my shelf for sure. I think I've had this like seven, eight years or something. And I do want to read it. Yes, it scares me since I found out that Charles Dickens literally got paid based on how, how many words he wrote. And this is like 500 pages and I'm afraid it's going to be very descriptive. But yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. This is from... 1992 so this book is older than me because i was born in 95 uh but i got this one from my brother for christmas and he bought this on sort of an antique shop uh like i said seven or eight years ago so i really need to read it at some point and then we also have jane eyre by charlotte bronte this is the penguin classics edition which i found really simple but very pretty which i choose to annotate my books in uh this is the first one i actually own but i have definitely planned to buy more of these just because I do want to annotate them because it's like a very good edition. So I have read um, Jane Eyre three times and also one time as a sort of comic book version. So four times if you count the story. So really love this book so much. We're talking about, you know, Jane Eyre. Here is the comic book um, version. This is actually in Swedish. Uh, but this is called Klassiska Serie Album. I actually bought this one at the Gothenburg Book Fair like two years ago or something like that. Uh, wasn't completely utterly sold like on the art sale, but I did still really enjoy it because it's Jane Eyre. And then we have uh, Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. This is illustrated by Julia Sarda. So this is really pretty and you can like open it, really pretty ink papers and the illustrations are really great as well and the text is very big. Um, didn't love this book, it gave it like 3.5 stars I think but still very pretty. Reminds me of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland which I have too many cups of uh, but this is by Lewis Carroll and this also happens to be illustrated by Julia Sarda which is why I brought it up. So this is by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. This one is Two Hoots. So same illustrator, different publishers. I have the Jungle Book by uh, Rudyard Kipling. This is the illustrated with interactive elements version by Mina Lima. I actually have read this one and really enjoyed it. There's a bunch of short stories in there as well. It's like really beautiful papers and then there's stuff that you can like pull out and stuff a uh, really fun way to read it I actually have another book in this one as well which we'll get to later when I find it <laughs> and then we have three books in the same editions and I love these books so much so we have Snow White by the Brothers Grimm illustrated by Camille Rose Garcia and these were like dark and gory but so beautiful and it's like so pretty underneath the dust jacket as well and just gorgeous overall and I've had these editions for quite some time now and it's just beautiful and this is from Harper Design which is an imprint of Harper Collins Publishers and they also have um, Cinderella or the Little Glass Slipper by Charles Perrault illustrated by Camila Rose Garcia Camila Rose Garcia and it's just beautiful you know 
already. And least but, last but not least, we have Alice Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, illustrated by Camille Rose Garcia. And this is just wraps around the entire thing. And it's just an A. This is definitely one of my favorite Alice editions, and I have a lot. Um, but yeah, it's so pretty. And then we have Kiki's Delivery Service by Eiko Kadono, illustrated by Joe Todd Stanton. Read this one, really liked it. Um, this is a Penguin classic, I believe. I think the imprint is Puffin Books. Um, but yeah, I read this one. It was really fun and, you know, a quick read. And I definitely wish they would translate more of the books in the series because I need it. And then we have a shitload of Alice books. And this is the complete Alice by Lewis Carroll with the original illustrations by Sir John Tenniel. And these are in full color and they have the most beautiful red edges and just some indentations and stuff. And it's just so beautiful. And you like can open it and you get, I don't know if you can see this very well. It's the baby. And yeah. I love this one, and it's the original illustrations and everything. This is a bit dusty. <laughs> but yeah, this is beautiful, and I love it, which is why I have so many editions by Alice in Wonderland. I've read it like, I read it 10 times in the same year, but I think in total I've read like 13, 14 times. Uh, but this is Macmillan Children's Books. We have Alice in Wonderland, once again, by Lewis Carroll. Um, and this is illustrated by Mabel Lucy Atwell. And it's so pretty. See if you can find any illustrations. It's sort of an orange sort of scheme. And this is also by Macmillan Children's Books. We have the Disney Alice in Wonderland, the Sinistory comic. And it's really pretty. But it's basically just like the pictures from the animated movie. And then we have Alice in Wonderland, the graphic novel by Osborne, I think. And this is based off of the Alice in Wonderland story. So, I mean, they've cut some stuff. But I really like these illustrations. And you know, you can never have too many Alice editions, that's what I keep saying. And then we have the Puffin Books edition of Alice in Wonderland. This is illustrated by Anna Bond. And they have these beautiful, beautiful flowers. And I think this might be one of my favorite Alice editions. Like, it's just so pretty. I really feel like I need to read Alice now, but I have so many classics, so I probably should. We have Alice Adventures in Wonderland and Other Tales by Lewis Carroll. This is also illustrated by John Tenniel and has this beautiful, beautiful slipcase. Ah, so pretty. And this is by Knickerbocker. Knickerbocker? <laughs> Classics. I actually haven't read all of these tales and I really should get to them because I've all read the Alice books, which is a shame. These might be my favorite. I can't decide. I have like five. Um, but this is the complete Alice by Lewis Carroll, illustrated by uh, Helen Oxenbury. It has this beautiful, beautiful slipcase, and we're gonna pull one of them out. And this is Alice Adventures in Wonderland, and it's so pretty. I'll just show with the pig, and then we have also. Through the Looking Glass by the same illustrator, and it's just so pretty. And I love these editions so much. There's a reason why I bought so many editions because I can't decide which one is the prettiest. And then we have once again Alice Adventures in Wonderland. This is and Through the Looking Glass, and this is by John Tenniel's original illustrations. And I think this is a Barnes and Noble. Yep, it is. So really, really pretty indeed. Then we have the Walt Disney's Alice Wonderland, which is also based off the animated movie. This is like so extremely short, sort of this um, cardboard feeling to it. Um, and basically just the pictures from the series, from the movie. And this is a little golden book. Another one! I'm just going to stop saying the titles because it's just the same book. Uh, I got this one in an owl crate many moons ago. And it doesn't have any illustrations, it's just the text. Um, and this is how I <laughs> used to annotate on the top, it was so weird. Uh, but this is so beautiful, but yeah. This is from a Rock Paper Company, so I don't know if you can still get a hold of this, but yeah, it was really pretty. So pretty! I think this was the edition I bought for Jamie as well, because she also loves Alice in Wonderland, and we keep buying each other editions. <laughs> but it's fine. 
Um, but this is the Macmillan Classic, and this is also illustrated by John Tenniel, which is already original ones but it's so pretty and blue. Most done with the Alice Classics until we come to my unread Alice Classics and then we're back where we started. Um, but we have these sort of, this is also Puffin Books but I think they called it Chalk uh, Edition something. I really love this and this is also the illustrated illustrations by John Tenniel. This one I have on these shelves and this is by Penguin. Uh, Puffin Classics as well with the original. We're going on to a different series. So we have um, Little Women and Good Wives. This is like book one and two or however you want to see them, the combined one. Uh, and I have read these two, not in these editions, but I've read them and really, really love them. And of course, Little Women is beautiful, beautiful Puffin in Bloom editions and I just love it so much. I have to have it in Anne of Green Gables because I love it. This is by Ella Montgomery. I have a couple of editions of this too well and it's annotated and I just love it so much. We have uh, Anne of Green Gables again and this is an, an illustrated classic by Thunder Bay Books. I haven't actually read this edition but it has so beautiful pink edges and like full color illustrations like when she gets to the train station and everything. So love it. I'm just gonna start putting books back on my shelves because it's a bit chaos advice and I don't really have the rest right now to be able to hold a lot of them. Hi, sorry my camera died and then I had to go get my first COVID vaccine shot. So it's been a few hours but I'm back. I'm ready for part two, whatever <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So yeah let's get going. So I actually have three more in the Puffin Chalk editions that I was talking about that I had Alice in Wonderland in. And I have A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, and The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I read all three of these. Really love A Christmas Carol and The Wizard of Oz. Like, really, really love them. And then Peter Pan is good, but I don't love it. So, really pretty edition. We have more of the Puffin Bloom editions, and we have ha Heidi by Johanna Spiri and A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And these are so beautiful! And I definitely need to rearrange my shelves so they can fit next to Anna Green Gables and Little Women, but that's for another time. Um, but yeah, I love these editions. I think this is uh, like one of my favorite ones because these are also illustrated by Anna Bond, just like the one I showed earlier from Alice in Wonderland. Um, I love this edition so much. I have read both of these, absolutely love them. Such an enjoyable reads. Definitely want to reread them though, so I should probably do that very soon. And then we have Musuk Man Nehor by John Steinbeck. This is the Swedish edition. I had to read this uh, for Swedish class in like 8th grade. Uh, and we ran around all like through the town just looking for an edition. Uh, this is for Biblioteket. This is like really, really old. Um, someone called Björn got this as a present in 61. <laughs> this was published in 1955. So it's pretty darn old, uh, but still pretty good condition and I definitely want to keep it around. We have the Secret Garden, which is just beautiful with the golden edges and the beautiful spine. And this is the Barnes & Noble um, edition as well. This is by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I don't think I said it. Um, and it's just beautiful. And I have read this book and I really, really enjoyed it. And I definitely need to reread it. Which is the case for most of these books. This behemoth. And this is the complete works of William Shakespeare. And it's this beautiful Knickerbocker Classics edition. And it looks like this. And this includes all 37 plays, 154 sonnets and 4 narrative poems. So... There's a lot of stuff in here, and the only one I've actually finished was um, Macbeth, which I read twice for school. Another big book, and that is The Complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I have only read the first book in this one, A Study in Scarlet, and I definitely need to pick this one up and continue reading it, because it's beautiful with golden edges, and if I could just read a couple, I could put it on my shelf with my red books if I finish it. Now to the unread books. Well, most of them are unread. First of all, we have another Alice in Wonderland book. This is, was a present from my friend Jamie. I got it for Christmas of last year, I think. This is the Macmillan Collector's Library. 
I definitely checked out all of the other books that they have because sort of embossed underneath there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And it has like golden, sort of sparkly page um, sides and these beautiful end papers. And there's a lot of classics in this edition, and I want to know them all. I want to buy them all. But like I said, I read Alice in Wonderland 13 times, so love it. Have read it a bunch of times. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I think this is. This is probably my favorite Jane Eyre edition, I think, most definitely. Um, but this is the, what's it called? Chiltern Classics. So it's beautiful flowers, golden suede edges, and this is the only book you have in this edition, which I don't know why, because I love this edition so much and I want to own every single classic in this, basically. And they're so beautiful, all of them. I definitely, Put them in my shopping cart, remove them, put them back, and you know, that's the story of my life. But yeah, definitely gonna start stocking up on this because it's beautiful. The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Powell. This is the Barnes & Noble Classics edition. And it's just beautiful with the sort of coppery edges and like this. Haven't read this. I have watched the animated movie bunch of times when I was a kid, really enjoyed that, so I probably should get around to reading this one. And then we have The Story of King Arthur and His Knights by Howard Pyle as well. This has like beautiful purple, silver edges, and gold details. Haven't read this one either. Uh, I have seen a few episodes of Merlin. <laughs> Does that count? Uh, but yeah, I haven't read this one, but I really want to. As you can tell, I have a shitload of classics. Some I've read, some I haven't read. And we should just get on to it. And now we have Greek Myths, uh, a wonder book for girls and boys by Nathaniel Hawthorne. This is also Barnes & Noble, uh, classic leather bound classics edition, and it's beautiful. Haven't uh, read this one, but I have read a couple of books about Greek mythology, because I really like mythology. Uh, but yeah, I definitely should read this one. So it's so short too, I should be able to read it very quickly. We have Dracula by Bram Stoker. St Bram Stoker? Stoker. Um, it's so beautiful and shiny and there's always a quote on the back. Um, this is the Penguin Classics Edition. I don't know if they have a specific name for it because I can't find it. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of classics out in this edition and they're so beautiful and I want to own them all. So I'll probably have several copies of every single book in the world. Then we have The Adventures of Pinocchio. This is the illustrated uh, edition with interactive elements by Mina Lima. And this is written by Carlo Collodi. It's Italian, I can't pronounce that. Um, but it's so beautiful. And then there's like interactive elements and stuff like that. So definitely need to read this one, but I haven't yet. Um, I used to watch the animated movie a, uh, a couple of times when I was little. When it turned into donkeys, really scared the living crap out of me every time. But yeah, I definitely need to read this one. So my favorite editions actually. So we have uh, Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. All of this will be by the same author by the way. Uh, Anne of Avonlea. Anne of the Island. Uh, Anne of Windy Poplars. Uh, Anne's House of Dreams. And Anne of Ingleside. These are all annotated, as you can see, um, but I love these editions, they're so beautiful. And, oh, and by the way, these are Source Books Fire, the editions. Then we also have Anne of Green Gables. I have a lot of editions. Uh, Anne of Avonlea. Anne of the Island. Anne of Windy Willows, they changed the name. Anne's House of Dreams. Anne of Ingleside. Rainbow Valley and Rilla of Ingleside. And these are the, what's it called? Virago Modern Classics Edition. We have Rainbow Valley, and this is the Arcturus Edition um, by Ellen Montgomery. Now we also have Rilla of Ingleside by Ellen Montgomery, and this was just like the last one, which I can't keep forgetting. Right away, Arcturus Edition. The one from the Penguin Books um, edition, uh, but this is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Lewis, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. It's so beautiful. I have read this one, uh, but there's also a short story in the back, 
called The Bottle Imp, which I have not read. Jane Austen's Sense of Sensibility and Northanger Abbey. And these are the vintage classics. And they're just so beautiful and I love them. And no, I haven't read them, but I will. Very soon. Northanger Abbey, I'm actually planning on reading later this very week. So I'm working on it. And then we have uh, Seven Novels by Jules Verne. This is the Barnes Noble Leatherbound Classics Edition. And it's so beautiful with the golden edges. Uh, like I said, it involves seven novels. And the only one I've read is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Absolutely love that one. Uh, and then Around the World in 80 Days, I used to watch the animated version because we had that as a VHS when I was a kid. I watched it a bunch of times. I really loved that movie. So I really should get cracking on this one. Sure. Uh, Hans Christian Andersen, Classic Fairy Tales. This is also the Barnes & Noble Leatherbound Edition and it's beautiful. And haven't really read like any of these. The Snow Queen and Other Winter Tales. And this is also Barnes & Noble. And it's so beautiful! Haven't read any of these either. I have another edition of Jane Eyre, because I can't get enough. And this is the Seasons edition, so I think this was um, Summer. And this is by Jane Eyre, of course, and it's beautiful. And no, I haven't taken off the protective plastic, because I don't want to ruin it. But I've read this three times. Well, not this edition, but, you know, the book in general. I have the Wonderland collection by Lewis Carroll, which I've read the... Alice's Wonderland books, but not anything else by him, so it's beautiful. We have Persuasion, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which I haven't read, should, and I also haven't read Persuasion. Weather in Heights by Emily Bronte. I have read this, not this edition, but I have read the book many, many moons ago, and I definitely should reread it because that was years ago. <laughs> A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. And these are all coming out from like um, spring, summer, autumn, winter. And they're also limited edition because only, they only print 10,000 of them. So some of them are already out of print, which bugs me because I want them. We have Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Very beautiful red edges. Haven't read this one. And this is sort of a Barnes & Noble Leadbound classic, I suppose. But it's more like flexibound, what do they call it? It's not a hard bag, at least. So. But I haven't read it either. Then since I got obsessed with Anne of Green Gables, I also bought Emily of New Moon, Emily Climbs, and Emily's Quest, all written by Ella Montgomery. And these are the Virago Modern Classics editions. And they're so beautiful. And I want to collect them all in that edition. I also, of course, bought Jane of Lantern Hill by Ella Montgomery in Virago Modern Classic. This is, I think, a standalone, but very beautiful and I just want to read everything she'd written so working on it. In the same edition I have Joyce, Joyce? <laughs> Joe's Boys and Little Men by Louisa May Alcott. These are book three and four, which order I do not know, um, to the Little Women series and I really need to get to these because I haven't read them but I will eventually. We have um, Lövenskjöld Skaringen, Charlotte Lövenskjöld and Anna Svärd. These are three books written by Selma Lagerlöf, which is a Swedish author. And I haven't read them, and I've had this for like five years. <whistles> and we have yet another one. Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, which I haven't read, but I really need to. And then we have The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Grammar, uh, Word, Wordsworth edition. This is. So these are all the same. And the last pile we have are books I inherited from my grandma when she passed away. Uh, so I have quite a lot. Uh, all of them are in Swedish, but these are sort of older editions, so I don't really know <laughs> if it's gonna help you anything if I say what editions they are because they're probably out of stock since a long time ago. Uh, but this is Rade Orm by Franz G. Bengtsson. Then Dolda Bl Blumma by Pearl Buck. Really like these covers actually. Really pretty. Resa utan mål, Cop Farewell by Harry, uh, Harry Martinsson. Uh, Död Mans Hand. I don't know who is by that because you can't read it anymore. Uh, Folk i Fridell. Uh, Långt från Landsvägen by Wilhelm Moberg. These are so old you can barely even read the spine of what the book is called. Utvandrarna by Wilhelm Moberg, which is a book I really, really should. Right, you know about 
leaving Sweden and coming to US. So I already should read that. We have Hemsebuna and Bärkarsli, can you say? Yes, by August Strindberg, which is also a book I really should have read. And then we have Brudernas Källa by Wilhelm Moberg. Now we have Frederland by Wilhelm Moberg. And you know, if you didn't know what it looks like, that's what it looks like, or looked like rather. Uh, but it's really pretty as well. We have Givos Jorden by Wilhelm Moberg in the same edition. And you know, if you want to know what it looked like, Plowing the Earth, that's what it looks like. Really a matchy matchy cover. So we have Calocane uh, by Karin Boye, uh, Hemsebuna, blah, blah, blah. Hemsebuna by Augustin Berg, Oops. Dvergen by Per Lagerqvist, uh, Mar Mar Markurels i Vadköping by Jalmar Bergman, and just a Berling Saga by Selma Lagerlöf, and these are all sort of in the same sort of uh, editions. And if you have like all of them, they're supposed to, I don't know, create faces of some sort. Um, but I only have book 1, 2, 8, 10 and 12, so they don't really create much, but they're supposed to if you have them all. So, always nice with some matchy matchy covers. Les Miserables, uh, if that's how you pronounce it, by Victor Hugo. Uh, this is also quite old. I don't know when this was published. Aww. My grandma actually put a sticker in it saying her name and like her street and everything. This was published in 1990, so it's older than I am, but um, not that old. Uh, but I like this cover, which is the same there on some other editions. I think I have some duplicates. Um, Ferredaland by Wilhelm Moberg and Felite by Karin Boye. Then we have Flugnas Herre, which I've actually read, but I read it in English. Uh, this is by William um, Golding. And then I have 1994 by George Orwell. I have read Animal Farm, but I haven't read this one. Yes, that was, I think, if I haven't forgotten anything, uh, those were all of my classics that I own, both read and unread books. It's quite a lot. It's quite daunting since I haven't read a lot of the ones I do have. Um, but you know, I'm working on it. At some point, I will have read them all. I hope. Who knows? I mean, I have a lot of books. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's probably extremely, extremely long. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And you know, if you did, please let, give me some thumbs up and also give me some comments down below and let me know what are your favorite classics because I wanna know and maybe I can check out your favorites as well. Um, so yeah, I hope we see you in the next one. Bye.